Robinson with the runner in traffic. One-handed rebound by Mitchell. How about Sticks Mitchell hoisting that rebound? Mitchell was the Atlantic 10 Rookie of the Year three years ago as a freshman at Duquesne, where he averaged 16. Started his first year at Seton Hall, but with the transfers of... This game is tight, but that affects both teams. That'd be one of the few times in his life that the whole coaching staff was yelling to his help, shoot, Jeremy, shoot. <laughs> I'm sure he was much obliged to do that. Pass went behind Brownlee. Mitchell comes the other way for Seton Hall, and the C parted there, didn't it? The Red Sea. How about Sticks Mitchell getting a, a gift right there? As you see, Coach Kendrick with a shooting hand as Robinson misses. And on the rebound, last touch by St. John's. And for the moment, the trainer, Heather Worthy, has not been able to stop the bleeding. So obviously, you can't play basketball. They won't let you back in the game if they don't stop the bleeding. So at this point, Hazel's return is questionable. And Bobby Gonzalez's team, obviously not the same without the eighth leading scorer in the country on the floor. And that may be an injury that requires some type of stitching. Because that, the webbing, you're always moving your fingers. That's going to continue to keep opening up. But they have to find a way to get him back because you're right, Bob, without him, Seton Hall is in a lot of trouble. Mitchell around the screen set by Pope. The pull-up from the high post. Mitchell with eight points off the bench. Norm Roberts wants to talk it over. Four-point Seton Hall lead with 107 remaining in the half. All season long, champion apparel will be showcasing the tradition and history of the Big East. Seton Hall just 2-19 and 19 in this building over the years. Mitchell for three. How about Sticks Mitchell? Stepping up in the absence of Hazel. He started a lot of games last year. He was the team's leading rebounder. Only a 29% three-point shooter. Mitchell's come off the bench to score 11 tonight. Horn looking for the drive. He's got eight. Horn taking that one strong, going chest to chest. Seton Hall not doing nice little crossover by Theodore. Oh, what a take by Theodore. That was, that was pretty. First two points of the night for Theodore, the sophomore from Englewood, New Jersey, played with Patterson Catholic. Kennedy drives, and it's blocked out of bounds by Jamal Jackson. 23 seconds to shoot for the Red Storm. Lawrence replaces Theodore. And I think right now St. John's really feels like they can take the ball to the basket. They can score in the middle. And you watch right here with the presence of mind right there, Booth. But watch Theodore with the little crossover action here. He takes it to the rim with a little finger roll. Theodore getting the start because Eugene Harvey is out of the lineup with a bruised hand. Pope rejected the shot by Kennedy. Pope's the fifth leading shot blocker in the Big East. That was his 44th of the year. Down low to Justin Burrell. Backing in on Pope, the turnaround. Rebound Mitchell in traffic. Quickly Lawrence the other way. Lawrence all alone inside is Robinson. And that may have been the easiest play of the night. Bob, you could have made that pass. I mean, he's wide open underneath Robinson. Well, Lawrence has played a very good floor game. He just cannot knock down a jumper. That's been his problem all year. But with Harvey on the bench, Lawrence has played multiple possessions at the point tonight. Kick out Horn with the drive and he is bumped by Pope and Horn will shoot well at least Jeremy Hazel has emerged from the locker room he has that hand heavily banded Robinson with 11 points off the bench Pirates by eight Seton Hall field goals tonight. Uh, St. John's field goals have come from the paint. They haven't been able to make a shot from downtown. At the free throw line, Paris Horn missing the free throw. Now, Hazel has emerged from the locker room. Certainly doesn't appear he's going to play. The right hand is bandaged, John. Is there no way, do you think, that he could play with the bandage on his hand? Well, I'm not sure. You know, trying to play 
with that much taping on your hand is like trying to play basketball with a baseball glove on. You have to be able to feel the basketball. Uh, and that's on his shooting hand, so he's not going to be able to get his fingertips really on the ball. And with the type of shooter that he is, it's going to be difficult. And trying to dribble the basketball, I think, will be tough. Having a conversation with not only the trainer, Heather Worthy, but the athletic director, Joe Quinlan. Like Heather is explaining in great detail the nature of the situation. And who knows, maybe they're having a high-level discussion about is there any possibility of letting him get back in the game? You, know, don't you, don't, you, you, you don't see this conversation going on during the game with the athletic director involved. Meanwhile, Robinson is on fire. He was 0 for 7 from three-point range all season, and he's knocked down two threes here in the second half. He's got 14 points. And you said it, Bob. You said he wasn't knocking down the trifecta. Well, I'm not too sure. Robinson draining threes from downtown. He had 16 points on 7 of 10 shooting, and Kennedy did not look the ball into his hands. It's the first St. John's turnover of the half, only the seventh of the game. That's good. Robinson has certainly take advantage for Seton Hall. Yeah, he's really stepped up. You know, we talk about him only knocking down one, one three-pointer before tonight, but he's knocked down a couple of trifectas from outside from both corners. He's been active in transition, and he's thrown down some monster dumps out of St. Patrick High School. Saw this guy play a lot. In Jersey, 14 points, nine boards, close to a double double. Which gives him 44 points in his last three games. Still seven minutes left in this one. Theodore playing catch with Robinson. It's a very different Seton Hall team without Hazel stylistically. How often do you see the shot clock running inside 10 as it is? Has happened so much here in the second half. Theodore ran it down to six and made the jumper. Pirates discovering perhaps a half court offense they didn't even know they had. <laughs> well, the gunslinger is sidelined right now, and this is forcing you to use all aspects of your team. Hardy with the miss and the block shot by Robinson. Mason's put back no good. Rebound pulled down by Pope is seventh. And Robinson, he. This guy is all over the court, getting it done in every facet of the game tonight. As a freshman at Memphis, he played 28 games two years ago, averaged three points per game, played on a team which lost in the NCAA championship game to Kansas, played only three games last year, five games, and transferred after the first semester. Mitchell with the runner, rebound, pull. Pirates destroying St. John's off the glass. And they've opened up a 14-point lead. When you think about the great rebounders in this league, Dewan Blair, Derek Coleman back in the day. You have to add Pope in now. They have a nose for the basketball. Justin Burrell with a pretty move in traffic. Everything St. John's has scored has been in the lane tonight. St. John's literally has not knocked down a jumper from the perimeter. Theodore. Around the Robinson screen. Theodore's done a very good job running the offense in these last five, six minutes. The state free. And he started a lot of games this year for Seton Hall in place of Harvey, so he's no stranger to running the point position. Theodore on the drive, no good. Rebound off Burrell's hand, but a foul is going to be called on Seton Hall. Let's look at Joe Quinlan, the athletic director of Seton Hall. We saw earlier Quinlan in an uh, interesting conversation with Jeremy Hazell and Heather Worthy, the Seton Hall trainer, that during the last time out, he had a lengthy conversation with Ron Linfont, who's the assistant athletic director for sports medicine at St. John's. And you have to believe that the nature of that conversation had something to do with Hazell. And, and you want to make sure, you know, it's one ball game. You don't want to injure yourself where you can't play down the line, you know, and I guess the C 